DBHDD is reminding people that the Georgia Crisis and Access Line can help those worried about opioid and stimulant misuse. The toll-free number is online and is active 24-7. More information at opioidresponse.info. Welcome to the new Georgia Today podcast from GPB News. Today is Thursday, January 19th. I'm Peter Biello. On today's episode, hundreds gather for a vigil after a protester was killed and a Georgia state trooper was shot outside a police training facility. There are more allegations in the federal lawsuit against a Georgia school district for civil rights violations, and an Atlanta hospital has become the very first in the country to be verified as a top-tier provider of maternal health services. These stories and more are coming up on this edition of Georgia Today. Supporters of the effort to stop construction by the city of Atlanta of a law enforcement training center in a DeKalb County forest gathered last night after one protester was killed by police. GPB's Amanda Andrews has more. The Georgia Bureau of Investigation is gathering evidence in the confrontation that led to a Georgia state trooper being shot and a protester being killed. Police report the officer fired in self-defense, but activists are calling that narrative into question, saying the Atlanta Police Department has a history of violence against peaceful protesters. Stan Sanders lives in Atlanta and left work to attend the vigil. Sanders says the movement to stop what protesters call Cop City is reaching new levels of support. But you can't ignore it anymore. You have to interact with it. You have to face the reality of it. You know, it's not just second nature anymore. It's affecting you, it's affecting loved ones, it's affecting the community, and it's affecting not even just our state, our country. Local organizers are planning to host another vigil Friday evening and a gathering Saturday to mourn the loss of life. For GPB News, I'm Amanda Andrews. A former high school student in southeast Georgia has joined a federal lawsuit against the Effingham County School District alleging racial discrimination and retaliation. GPB's Benjamin Payne has the latest. As GPB first reported last week, three black high school students are suing the Effingham County School District alleging a litany of civil rights violations. On Tuesday, a former student, Isaiah Job Wynn, added his name to the lawsuit, along with new allegations. Among them, Job Wynn, who is black, says he reported racist and threatening Snapchat messages sent by white students. He alleges the district retaliated against him by altering his transcripts such that A's became C's, drastically lowering his GPA. He says the district also added bogus disciplinary infractions to his record. Joe Wynn says Evingham later claimed the alterations were errors, which were later corrected, but only after he vigorously challenged the district. GPB requested comment from Effingham County School District Superintendent Yancey Ford. He says the district has not yet been served with the lawsuit and that they would respond to the allegations in court. For GPB News, I'm Benjamin Payne. Northside Hospital in Atlanta is the first in the country to be verified as a top-tier provider of maternal health services under a new program from the Joint Commission. The Maternal Levels of Care program designates hospitals based on available services for moms and babies. Though designation is not mandatory in Georgia, maternal health experts hope the program results in better patient outcomes. GPB's Sophie Gratis has more. Data shows 87 percent of Georgia's pregnancy-related deaths that occurred between 2015 and 2017 were preventable. Review and designation of perinatal care services can make those odds better. Shannon Stevenson is a board member for the state advocacy group Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies. You can look objectively at the qualifications that they use to make their designations. Um, and and match patients to the type of care and the level of care that they need to have the best outcome for them and baby. At Northside Atlanta, which delivers more babies than any other hospital in the U.S., a level four verification from the Joint Commission means the facility can handle the most complex patients. So far, Georgia has four verified maternal facilities. For GPB News, I'm Sophie Gratis. State University System Chancellor Sonny Perdue says he's concerned with the growing number of Georgia students that choose to go to college out of state. Making his budget presentation to lawmakers on Tuesday, Perdue said the Higher Education Agency is trying to do more with less money. And they are now, it's a buyer's market out there. They're customers now. And we've got to recruit them as customers because there's a lot of competition among our neighboring states for our Georgia students. The governor's budget proposal includes money to raise the HOPE scholarship to fully cover tuition. That's up from 60 percent. Budget hearings were scheduled through today. The Wall Street Journal ranks Atlanta-based Delta as the nation's top airline. 
Despite having a year that company CEO Ed Bastian described as one of Delta's worst operationally, the company came out on top in the newspaper's annual rankings for on-time arrivals, involuntary bumping, and other categories. Alaska Airlines ranked number two. Yesterday, we told you that Atlanta United star striker Joseph Martinez was released from the club and had signed with Inter Miami. It's a blow that is reverberating both inside and outside the passionate base of Georgia soccer fans that hailed Martinez as simply the king. To understand what he meant for the team and beyond, GPB's Orlando Montoya spoke with sports writer Felipe Cardenas, who reports on Atlanta United for The Athletic. Justin Martinez represented uh, a lot more than just the goals that he scored for Atlanta United, and, and that's that's what made him such a big star here in the city and a huge star in MLS. Like, let's 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 not kid about that. He was a massive star. He still is a big star in Major League Soccer. But coming in to the league in 2017, when Atlanta United was a brand new club, no history, you know, he put them on the map. He became the face of the franchise very quickly. And he was an unsung signing. He wasn't a star signing at the time. And so for seven years, literally the history of this club has been built around Joseph Martinez. And, and even when he was injured and he wasn't playing as much, there was still an expectation that he could save the club. And so him leaving really leaves a mark on the city. And it, it'll be looked back on as, as a key moment in the club's history. Uh, this had been sort of rumored and reported before, um, so there it was not unexpected, but it's still a shock nonetheless, or at least maybe it's re-traumatizing for, for fans to hear about it again. Yes, I, I think perhaps what's shocking to fans is, is the way that it played out. You know, this, this like like I mentioned, this is an icon of, the, of, the, of for Atlanta United. He became a well-known personality within the pop culture of Atlanta as well. Like He was up there courtside. At Hawks games with with very you know with famous rappers and and, and key moguls of the city, uh, he was you know compared to Matt Ryan, Trey Young, Julio Jones at the time is like he was up there as, as a player and an athlete that was that significant to the fabric of, of Atlanta. And so, with that being said, the fact that he didn't have a farewell game, uh, as they say in South America, left through the back door, which is sort of a sign of disrespect. That is what fans, I think, are really uh, grasping onto as something that is, is something that they cannot forgive. And so going forward, this leaves a, uh, a big hole, something that really cannot be replaced. Do you think that when he eventually does come back uh, playing for Miami, he might get the same kind of respectful um, uh, return and, and welcome as maybe, you know, Messi or Ronaldo got when they transferred teams and they came back to their old home team? Absolutely. I mean, and first of all, today Carlos Bocanegra said that you know, Joseph Martinez is not a player that can be replaced. And so uh, th- that's important to note because it's true. I mean, you're talking about a player that scored over 100 goals. He won three MVP awards in one season. He was the MLS MVP. He was the MLS All-Star MVP. And he was the MLS Cup MVP. It was really an incredible run. That same year in 2018, he broke an MLS scoring record. And then the following year he scored, I think he made, he scored in over 15 consecutive games, which is another record, I believe at a global stage. And so, yeah, I absolutely think that because he wasn't given that proper farewell, I can expect fans here in Atlanta. They probably have already circled that date in September. I believe it's September 16th when inner Miami visits Atlanta as their moment to truly show their love, their support, uh, and really thank this player, Joseph Martinez, that has given them so much joy. Well, thank you very much again for your expertise, and thanks for making a few minutes for me. Anytime, Orlando. Thanks for reaching out. A comet known as C-2022E3, or Comet ZTF, or just the Green Comet because of its bright green nucleus and its long, faint tail, is on display in the sky, possibly for the first time ever, or at least for thousands of years. Spectators may spot the comet's faint glow in the morning sky as it heads northwest, but there's no guarantee you're going to get to see it. A clear dark sky before dawn without the light pollution of cities would be ideal for seeing it. Early Saturday morning may be a good time, so maybe a trip to Tallulah Falls, Providence Canyon, or Jekyll Island is in order. After its brief appearance to us on Earth, it's unclear where it may go. Scientists have only recently begun to track its path. It's possible it may gain enough energy to fling out of our solar system, but then again, it might remain bound to its elliptical orbit for another trip around the sun. 
Comments go away. Sometimes they come back around. We hope you will come back around to this Georgia Today podcast. The best way to ensure you do that is to subscribe. So take a moment right now, subscribe to Georgia Today, and we'll be with you again tomorrow. Got feedback? We'd love to hear it. Send us an email. The address is georgiatoday at gpb.org. I'm Peter Biello. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you again soon.